Hi everyone, it's tax time again. So we are here today to provide some tax tips for property investors, for self-employed business owners, and if you're an employee, we're basically here to uh, give you some tax, tax tips to prepare for tax time uh, for this year and also maybe looking into next financial year, which is not too far away yeah, now, it's coming. Um, <laughs> to get ready for that. So it's Marissa here from Rise High and we've got Amanda Hi. from Rip Watchman and we are here talking tax time. We are, it's already come around again. It's Thanks amazing. for joining us, Amanda. Yeah, well, good. It's Thank hard you. to believe that it's already been a year since we last did this. Yeah, it feels like yesterday. It's just gone so quickly, hasn't it? <laughs> so too quick, too quick, but yes. yes, I think everyone's in the same boat. Just time is flying. So today we want to give you tax tips, as I said, uh, it's obviously heading into the end of financial year now. We've only got a few weeks to go before end of financial year. And that also means that a new financial year is, is upon us. Yes. So we might start with uh, tax tips for employees, mm -hmm. PAYG employees. Mm -hmm. So Amanda, what is important this year for PAYG employees to be aware of in preparing for their tax time? Uh, well, the ATO is, has pretty much announced its focus this year for 2022, and it will be four main areas, which will be basically looking at your deductions, your work-related deductions, and whether you've actually incurred them. Uh, it's looking at capital gains and cryptocurrencies, so trading. It's also um, looking at rental property. So they're looking at rental property specifically this year and just having a look at your deductions. And then obviously um, the businesses and looking at what businesses are doing. So it's a good um, lead into what we're going to be discussing today because they're actually focusing on those four areas quite Great. heavily. Today. Could we actually go through those areas in a bit of detail? So with the workplace deductions, because I guess, you know, a lot of people have been working from home a bit more yes. since COVID yes. and, you know, that seems to be an ongoing trend. So is that what you mean when you talk about those work from home deductions? Yeah. So work related deductions are uh, deductions relating to your employment. So they could be anything from uh, motor vehicle expenses so travelling to uh, appointments to different workplaces and claiming those deductions. There's uniforms, there's obviously working from home deductions, which is the COVID kind of deductions that have been available. It's a shortcut that the ATO have introduced and it's been extended this year, uh, which is great. So it's the 80 cents in the hour that you work from home, uh, normal uh, hourly um, full-time hours, so 38, 38 hours up um, that you can claim. Obviously, also relating to working from home, your mobile phones, uh, those type of things that you look to claim during the year because you've incurred it for work. And what do you need to do to make those sort of things tax deductible? So, for example, things like your car and mm -hmm. things like your mobile phone, um, you know, I imagine that most people would use their car and their mobile phone partly for work, partly for yeah. personal. So what sort of things do people need to do to to make those things claimable as deductions? Yeah, so I think the key definitely around um, motor vehicle is um, a good, uh, I guess, justification is getting your employer to write you a letter to say that yes, you do have to actually use your car for work-related purposes and why you're using it. So with cars, there's two types of uh, deductions that you can claim. It's a logbook or a cents per kilometre basis and they're based on whether you're traveling a lot or traveling a little. So up to 5,000 kilometers can be done through your cents per kilometer, and that's a 62 cents in the kilometer um, rate. And then the logbook is obviously claiming whatever the logbook, uh, three months is logbook, so whatever deductions or whatever travel you're actually using for the business is what you claim as a proportion to everything relating to the car. So with the logbook system, you do have to keep that logbook for you three do. months. Yes. And then that, gives you a deduction for the entire year, is yeah, that right? Yeah, it lasts for five years, so it's pretty good It lasts good for to, five years. Yeah, to so, and there's some pretty good um, apps now these yes. days where you can actually track the logbook yeah. pretty easily on, a, on an app, on an so app. There's, and they're quite a few free ones, I yeah. believe. Yeah, ATO has one. Um, they have a couple of apps available on the website, which and also My Tax Deductions, which allows you to kind of list all your deductions, basically, and able to email it to your tax agent at the end of the year, which makes it super easy at tax time. Yep, yeah, awesome. So. Um, I guess, are they, are they the main things to watch out for? Is there anything else that you'd say that people need to watch out for when they're preparing for their tax uh, returns for this year? I think the real key this year is don't just uh, tell your accountant, I'll claim the same as last year. It's really important to kind of uh, individualise your tax return and your affairs because everything changes. And with the yes. last two years, COVID has changed a lot. So 
looking and telling, advising your client and accountant, you know, same as last year, let's just go with that, is not really the key. It, it is really up to you to identify your deductions and actually whether you're incurring the cost. And there has to be a nexus between your actual deductions and the employment. So it's all very well saying, you know, I bought myself a shirt, uh, but did the shirt have a logo? Was it actually a work-related deduction? Mm -hmm. You need to make sure there's a connection. Yep, excellent. And what would you say are the key opportunities to look for for those people watching that do want to reduce their tax or pay a little bit less tax this year pay as a an, bit, yeah. as a pair YG employee? <laughs> I mean, I guess the opportunities are a little bit more limited for yes, employees. Yes. Than, uh, so what would you say are the key areas that they could opportunities uh, for reducing tax? Yeah, I think for now, I mean, we've only really got a month. So for now, for this financial year, I'd probably suggest looking at your current situation and identifying whether there are some things that you can incur before the 30th of June that are actually work-related deductions. Superannuation is a good one. Um, you have up to $27,500 that you can claim with your employer uh, and, and obviously your own deductions. And you can claim that as a deduction against your tax return and get that benefit. So if you do have any spare cash lying around and you do have that ability to be able to claim the deduction, you might as well go down that road as well. It reduces the tax you're paying and obviously gives you the benefit for the long term. Of the additional super. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Great, so um, just to wrap this one up in terms of helping support employees, PAYG employees, what tips do you have in terms of preparing for next financial year starting 1st of July? Um, I would probably say look at uh, if there's any changes. If you are um, working for somebody and you have the op opportunity to do salary sacrifice, it's a really good idea to do that and start that at the 1st of July. So you have a full year of being able to claim the reduced income uh, in your tax return. So um, most employees allow you to do salary sacrifice super and mm -hmm. obviously work-related cars. If you do salary sacrifice your motor vehicle through a novated lease, you just need to bear in mind that you can't claim any cost associated with the car in your tax return. You're getting the benefit by having the reduced tax. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I guess the other key is the ATO are data matching a lot, um, and it's causing nightmares because sometimes they're over data matching and they're not actually asking questions, they're just assuming the data's correct. So make sure you have all your information as well. Can you explain that data matching? What does that actually mean and how does that work? So at the moment, um, I, I can feed in with uh, employees, but um, employers at the moment and self-employed, but at the moment they are basically taking the data that uh, your employer is sending off to the ATO when they do the single touch payroll. So when they pay you, they're sending that information to the ATO and that ATO is, uh, that data is being collected and then obviously reviewed. And then they're looking at your tax return that you're lodging in that year and saying, is this correct? Is this matching with what we've got? Um, the other prime example is uh, private hospital cover. They're matching the, the labels and obviously the amount that is being claimed under your um, private hospital cover. So make making sure that you're actually claiming the correct labels. Because there are significant penalties for lying on a tax return yep. or not giving the right information is, isn't there? Well, they do penalise if they see that you're doing it on purpose. If there's yep. a genuine mistake and you own up to it as soon as you're, uh, I guess it's identified, then they are pretty lenient. They may charge penalties or they may remit it. Yep. They have remitted up to 80% of the penalties once someone's identified the error. So they're not scary, but they do like to data match. So you yep. just need to make sure your information's correct. So that was our summary for tax tips for PAYG employees. We at Rise High are always here to help you out and Amanda at Rich Watmond is always happy to help out as well. I believe Amanda, you're happy to provide a checklist to our viewers. Yes, yes I've provided um, that. So, so we yes. will have that in the blog and the comment section below following the post. And we'd really love to help you in any way we can, whether it's around your finance or preparing for tax time, uh, end of financial year, beginning of a new financial year. We are here to help you and thank you very much for your support. Thanks and have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.